I was also in college on September 11th in 2001. I was a sophomore at New York University. I stood with about 10 or 12,000 of my classmates in the middle of our campus in Manhattan in a park called Washington Square as we watched the second plane fly into the towers. Where there was lots of noise and lots of commotion in the midst of everything that ensued thereafter, I found myself in places where an 18-year-old necessarily shouldn't find themselves in. And I remember so many things distinctly in those days after. I remember overhearing students that went to school with me that were saying things to the effect of, we need to gather up all of the Muslims and send them out of this country so that things like this don't happen anymore. I remember walking down a staircase and a young woman trying to push me down the stairs and me turning and looking to her eye to eye and seeing just anger apparent on her face. I remember my roommates who were not Muslim, but came from a South Asian background, who were Hindu, Christian, and also Sikh themselves, saying that we can't let you walk around by yourself we're gonna all walk around together. And I distinctly remember four days later, when I had finally gotten out of New York City after transit reopened and we could move again, when I heard the news that our brother Balbir Singh Sordi was killed senselessly right in the spot that we are standing today. My sincerest condolences go to you all as his members of his family. As my sister Valerie said, it wasn't full across headlines everywhere, but I can tell you there were so many of us who heard his story and understood the importance of it, both in that moment as well as over the last 20 years. And standing here with you all today, it hits me just how deeply connected we are in ways that we at times don't even realize. And how constantly over the last two decades, this man's story kept coming into my life again and again and again. I've always had a deep affinity for the Sikh community, and it's not just because of our shared Punjabi roots, or that one of the families that we were so close to growing up was one of my father's partners in his medical practice, a man who is named Dr. Ajit Singh Sodi. But to recognize and understand to me as a person trying to make sense of everything that has transpired in these last 20 years. Individuals who are so deeply committed to their faith and the values that it espouses, who do not seek validation from a society that cannot understand that people who have brown skin can practice different religions, who still, despite everything else, find a deep sense of identity rooted within their own tradition, regardless of who it is that tells them they don't belong. I was gathering my thoughts and listening to every word that was uttered, that in the last year and a half of a pandemic, I didn't know how much my heart needed to be in a place where I heard people speaking in Punjabi and seeing people who look like my own family members utter prayers in the remembrance of a good man. And one of the times that I first was blessed to learn the name of Ranaji was at a panel I was sitting at that people had authored a text called Patriot Acts. Narratives of post 9-11 injustice. And of the people that were speaking, there was a young sick man who was standing, tall, well-built, 
but had a certain quietness to him. And as he was telling his story, he shared how he was constantly harassed and mocked and ridiculed and bullied in his school. And it got to a point where he came home and he said to his father that I can't take it anymore. I want you to cut my hair. The father, he did what his son said to him. And it still sticks with me till today, the words that this young man said as he saw the locks of his hair falling to the ground. It was like a tree, he said, watching its own leaves fall to the earth. And a tree does not look right without its leaves. And I felt more connection and solidarity to this young sick man in that moment than I have to most people of my own faith. Later on, we're going to light candles at this gathering. And when you look at that gathering, you want to think in the example of the candle, what it means to be a person of real love. Because the light from that candle will give us the best example of what this country is in need of so much more so than it might want to admit. That from one candle we'll be able to light candle upon candle upon candle and the initial flame will not burn out. If anything, it's just creating more and more light. You want your light to be like that. We want our light to be like that. And the light from that candle will give in every way and direction that the flame allows for it to go not putting conditions or qualifications in any capacity. And that's the way we want our light to be shared. That's the way we want our love to be given. As a Muslim, I can tell you that I'm so grateful for the Sikh community that the rise in hate and bigotry and an emboldened racism that systemically and structurally plagues our society now has had many people say that we need to distance ourselves. But I've never heard once any of my sick brothers and sisters say that we will separate ourselves from people who are Muslim. If anything, all I have heard over and over and over again is that your religion does not teach you to do that. It teaches you to do other than that, to be with people and to stand with them in their moment of need. And I hope the rest of us who are gathered here today as sisters and brothers, as allies, whatever it is that brings us, that we recognize our blessing to be a part of a moment like this. And that we open up our hearts to all of the love that is being shared here tonight so that we can take a little of it back with us to wherever we're going and become those who simply do what is right because it is the right thing to do. And so in the true legacy of our brother Balbir Singh Sodi, May we always be the reason that people have hope in this world and never the reason that people might dread it. <laughs>